All right, all right, folks. So I am, uh, I'm working on actually all my cars now. So I got one, one big project that I've never disclosed or I haven't disclosed in years. And then uh, I got my Impala, as you know, and of course I have my Porsche. So uh, the thing is, is I got something out of all the different arenas. But the main thing I wanted to touch on today is that, you know, everything that you see missing on the car right now has all been powder coated or redone or whatever, re-chromed and whatnot. The rims got redone. I went with the uh, black clone lip, um, just like from my other project uh, for the SLC. Uh, I'm just a huge fan of black chrome. So I used to, <coughs> excuse me, I used to have chrome rims. And so uh, just went a little bit different. The center plate was the same color as the car. It was like a, a root beer brown chrome in the center, but I went black. And then it was always gold in the webbing. But that was done with a Spectrochrome kit. And I sold that years ago. Would never do that again. Um, and that was before powder coat even had gold back then. So some of the remnants on the car, like my tail lights or around the tail lights, that actually has real gold on it. Uh, my door handles had real gold uh, because that was the only thing available. And it was ridiculously expensive. I remember I had my door handles this piece down here you can see some remnants of the gold that's all real gold that was power that was uh done by the electrolysis machine to adhere the gold to the part the bezels around the front headlights were done like i spent i don't know rough almost three thousand dollars on the gold on this car back in the day uh matter of fact it's all faded so you can't write me a ticket but like all back here all that's real gold that's 24 karat gold that was done on the car. I'm gonna even try to polish that out, but because I didn't have those redone. Um, but that's that ain't no. Uh, and you can see, I mean, it survived sitting out here for seven years. So that's not it's, powder coating wasn't like I said even available back then. This was back in I think ninety. I almost want to say ninety nine. I think I had this stuff done. So it's been on there a long time. You know, the emblems back here. That's all real gold. So the only other thing that you could have done back then was anodizing. And so I had a spectrochrome kit that allowed me to do the gold for my rims and that was painted. And a spectrochrome was the only material available at that time to do almost like a two-tone with the gold and kind of play with it. But the process in order to get that done was insane. It was just a tremendous amount of work. So inexpensive, I don't like the owner either. You pissed me off, and that's why I sold my equipment. Can't do business with people that ain't happy. So got rid of that. But technology's come around. We can all powder coat and do all these trick colors and stuff like that. Um, the body. <clears throat> this is the main reason why I'm doing this video, because I'm going to get into car detailing as well as I finish my projects. So I've been doing a lot of homework on this. As you can see, the reflection of the paint. This is a four-stage candy paint you there first of all you're lucky to find somebody to even do a candy paint job like this that even knows how to second of all like the technology is different too though you don't have to necessarily do a four stage in order to do a candy today but this is the kind of paint job that lasts this is the kind of paint job that is not even legal to do anymore if it tells you how long ago that was done it has lead based clear in it uh or lead based pearl they don't make that anymore when i first got my car done i actually wrecked it uh this fender in fact um steering wheel came off car hit it side swipe and um wrecked it and i literally had to track down some lead-based pearl that was in a scientist or a chemical scientist office in the corner and he fedexed it to me so that way we could literally match the paint bam bam redone homie but that's the talent that my painter has now paint correction this car has been sitting up for at least probably like eight years i haven't driven this car i mean it starts and everything now i've been working on it a little bit but i haven't driven this car and so the paint it has a lot of clear on it i mean a lot now this is like regular water it's still dirty obviously it's still dirty but my point is is you can see the oxidation that is kind of set up on the top layer of the paint. Now typically somebody would have to wet sand it, take that off, almost shave off the top layer of the clear, not the paint, of the clear, to literally get that haze away. 
this is almost like using CLR in your shower. So <clears throat> you would have to go through that process and then use your compounds to build it back up in order to have your shine. Okay. Now, products I'm using. This is without wet sanding. Without wet sanding. This is just using my first stage of my secret sauce to be able to get past this down to that. So I've taken off that layer of oxidation back down to the original clear so I can now build it back up and polish it out. So this is not, and I mean not polished at all. This is just rubbed out with the compound uh, version of the product that I plan on using. Haven't even polished it out yet. I still got two stages to go. But the cool thing about it is you can see the big, distinct difference in, in, uh, in uh, reflection. But the thing is, is there are no mini scratches in this paint. It's just mirror finish, period. I don't care how, what angle, light, it don't matter. There's no scratches at all. So what that means to you is... I can polish out or detail a car, do a paint correction that much faster. Um, so we're saving time, still building out the materials to protect the paint. And I'm really, really excited. I'm really, really excited to get the car done. It's going out next week for some uh, air ride. And uh, then once we take care of the front, because I'm too embarrassed to even show my front end damage up there because the whole car is cool. I literally only got two dents in this car. There's one way back there and one up here. And the rest of this car is completely straight and perfect. And I'm really happy about that. I've taken a lot of pride to be able to protect this candy paint for almost, what, 25 years now. Uh, so with no scratches or anything like that. So, uh, But I do have to redo the front. Um, I'll show you that. But I'm like I said, I'm a little bit embarrassed of that. But the weather beat that up. It is what it is because it wasn't covered. And it was just one of those things. So anyway... Um, I will do another video when I'm all done with the car. I'll show you what it looks like when it goes up on a flatbed. Or maybe uh, once I've had the air ride installed, I'll do a video then. You can see the dramatic difference between what the car looks like here, you know, with the overcast and everything, and how we don't have any bit of a reflection for the most part here. It's just dull. But, you know, over here, night and day. Dull, night and day. So, um, uh, I'll get back to you guys. Thanks for uh, checking out the video.